Man, CPUs get hot. And if you're trying to do some overclocking or just getting some better performance out of your CPU, a new cooler can be a world of difference. The stock cooler that comes with Ryzen is sufficient for normal use, uh, but it limits your ability to overclock your CPU. And if you have an Intel processor, you have to buy a cooler anyway because it doesn't come with one. There's a new cooler that just hit the market and we're gonna take a look at it today. Hey there guys, Captain Morgan bringing another video to you. Just as a reminder, I stream every Monday, Friday, and Saturday on Twitch at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. So if you got some time, come on by and check us out, hang out in the chat, and play some games with us. I also want to let everybody know that this product was sent to me by the manufacturer to get kind of my, you know, first take on this thing. Um, so I just want to be as transparent as possible that they did send it to me, but the fact that they sent it to me does not uh, sway my opinion whether you should get it or not. I'm trying to be as uh, unbiased and as transparent as possible about it. Also, there is an affiliate link down in the description if you like what you see in this video and you want to pick one up for yourself, head on down to the link. Go check this thing out on Amazon. There is one more small thing that I want to ask you guys. Uh, I've been looking to spruce up the uh, stream a little bit and I kind of want to get some people's opinions on what I should do. Uh, I'm going to be having a, a lit LED sign that's going to be going on the wall here with the Captain Morgan logo, but uh, you know, look around the back, you know, what what kind of things would you guys like to see? Go ahead and uh, comment down in the comment section and let me know what you think you would like to see in the stream. Now with all that said, let's jump into the unboxing and get into the review. Here we have the box. We'll just go ahead and take a real quick look around the outside of it. A couple of details there on what the specs are. More pictures, 150 watt TDP. Very nice, very professional looking. Let's go ahead and open this sucker up. All right, as you can see, very well packaged. Everything's pretty well immobilized. Have a little accessory bag. We'll get into that a little later. There is a foam piece isolating the PWM fan from the cooler itself. Go ahead and slide these out of here. Nice box. See you later. Another piece we don't need. See you later. Nice. Not too shabby. So it is a 120 millimeter fan. Uh, pretty generic. It is RGB, but it comes with one connector. So there is no RGB control with this PWM fan. And here we have the cooler. Very nice. Out of the box, nothing bent. There are five heat pipes. But uh, no bent fins, no anything like that. A little protective cover over top of the mating surface for the CPU. Please remove before installation. That is a pretty good tip. Very nice. All right, let's open up this bag of goodies. First thing you get is the Intel mounting bracket for Intel CPU sockets. You also get a tube of thermal paste, Vetru branded. You get an AMD set of mounts, as well as an Intel set of mounts. And these are the spring retention clips for the fan to clip to the cooler itself and mounting screws. And you can't forget a manual and voila, everything that's in the box laid out on the table. So now that we've unboxed it all, let's go ahead and check out the specs of what are on this. So I just want to go ahead and uh, let it be known that I am not comparing this to other air coolers. I am only comparing this to what comes with a Ryzen processor. There's the Ryzen 5 1600, 2600. They all come with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. So this is what I'll be comparing this with. 
So Vetru is a child company of Dark Flash. Now Dark Flash, they make PC cases. I'm pretty sure they've made fans um, and they're starting to branch out now to other PC components. Uh, we personally have a Dark Flash case. Uh, it's actually what's going to be putting this cooler into is going to have a Dark Flash case. Um, as soon as I heard that they said they were gonna start making PC components, I was excited and I just couldn't wait to get my hands on it. So let's go ahead and jump into the specs and then we'll move on to benchmarking and finally the results. So the aluminum heat sink measures 148 millimeters from the CPU to the top. It is 128 millimeters wide and is 75 millimeters thick with the included fan installed. The heat sink fins are 0.4 millimeters thick. There are a total of five six millimeter copper heat pipes uh, that are powder coated white to match everything else. Uh, it is a direct contact base for the heat pipe, so there's no ridges or valleys. It's all ground very smooth. This fits AMD sockets for AM4, AM3+, AM2+, FM2+, and FM2. This also fits Intel sockets for LGA 1366, 1156, 1155, 1151, 1150, and 775. It does come with an included 120 millimeter PWM fan. It is a three pin fan, not a four pin fan, and it does lack the RGB control, so it is stuck on rainbow. It has an average of 21 to 52 CFM, a hydraulic bearing, and at its max volume, it's 30.8 dolbs. This is available in black and white. The white one is what was sent to me. So I ran this benchmark on the kids gaming PC, but before we run into the benchmark, let's just do a quick overview of their system so you can kind of get a baseline of what the system was that we benchmarked it on. This PC has a Gigabyte Aorus B450M motherboard. It has a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, 16 gigs of Team T-Force 3200 megahertz RAM, a Silicon Power Alpha 60 256 gig M.2, a PNY 500 gig SSD, Cooler Master 500 watt power supply, a Sapphire Pulse RX 5600 XT 8GB model GPU, and the Dark Flash DLM 21 mesh case. So in order to benchmark these, we tried a couple of different ways to get the uh, CPU temperatures to rise so we can get an accurate baseline for what the stock cooler could do. We tried running more CPU intensive games, CPU intensive productivity tasks, but overall what we found was the best way to do is just open a whole bunch of uh, Chrome windows with YouTube videos running in there and it got the CPU cooking pretty good. So what we did is we opened eight browsers and we had YouTube videos playing concurrently on all of them. And then we just monitored the CPU usage and the CPU heat, the temperatures uh, with CPU. For benchmarking, we used uh, CPU ID, which is hardware monitoring. It's a free tool to download from Google. Just go grab it if you wanna start doing some benchmarking of your own. So up first we benchmarked the Wraith Stealth Cooler and we benchmarked for about 30 minutes running with eight YouTube windows open, windows, not tabs. So there are eight YouTube windows open and running a video in each one of those for about 30 minutes. And what we see here is the average range of temperature is it's about 65 degrees Celsius. I wanna say up front that uh, we did not overclock this CPU. It is stock factory voltages and it is running as it should be out of the box. Uh, we've made no modifications to this whatsoever. So now let's go ahead and install the Ventru cooler. The first thing that you're going to want to do is disconnect the power and discharge the system by pressing the power button a few times. Then ground yourself to the case or wear an anti-static band and disconnect the old CPU fan. And loosen the four screws in a star pattern. Carefully remove the stock cooler by pulling straight up. I will say there's a word to the wise. If you have just been benchmarking, sometimes the CPU can come up out of the socket. So if you're pulling to the left or to the right, up or down, and you end up pulling the CPU out of socket, there's a really good chance that you're gonna pull some of the pins out or shear them off. So always pull straight up when you're trying to remove the cooler. In the event that your CPU is stuck to the cooler, an old trick is getting some dental floss and using it kind of in a sawing motion very carefully, having a lot of patience, and you will eventually be able to separate the CPU from the cooler. So now that we have the cooler removed, we need to carefully remove all of the thermal paste and make sure it is completely clean before we start adding more. And once that is clean, we're ready to start installing the new cooler. 
There is one note that I have. The CPU does come with its own thermal paste from Vetru, but I don't really know how well Vetru thermal paste compares to other thermal paste. So I went ahead and I got the Arctic MX4 paste. It's something that I've used before. I like it, it works well. I'm gonna keep going with it. So now we apply a rice grain size of thermal paste on the CPU. You can either use the included spreader to make an even layer or just let the compression of the cooler spread the paste. You then need to install the appropriate bracket to the cooler. There is a tip that I have for you. Uh, while I was doing this install, I apparently put these brackets on the wrong way and the instructions are picture only. There's no written instructions, at least no lengthy written instructions. So this is something you're gonna kind of have to look at as you put it on there. And if it's being real rough and tough and it's not going in the way it's supposed to go, stop, don't try and force it in the holes. <laughs> stop, take a look at it. You might have those backwards. So sometimes they have to go on the other side completely. Then install by tightening the screws in a clockwise pattern. Once the cooler is in and secure, install the fan by aligning the cooler clips with the mounting holes in the fan itself, and then clipping those into the cooler. Repeat this process on the other side, and the last step is to plug in the fan to the CPU header, usually located at the top of the motherboard. So once we got the cooler installed, uh, I let it run normally for a little bit, just kind of warm up, make sure there was no problems, nothing was wrong. And um, I was gonna run it through the exact same test as the Wraith. And for a little bit, I was just like, man, that is really rainbow. So we're gonna have to change the fans a little bit. The kids, they'll, they'll eat it up. They love, they love this RGB stuff. I was expecting this to be cooler than the Wraith Stealth Cool. I was not expecting it to be this much cooler. As you can see here, with the same test running, we are seeing average temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius. That is a 30% increase in cooling efficiency, which is astounding. I even went as far as doubling the amount of open windows of YouTube videos, and it still only spiked up to 47 degrees. I will say I am now impressed by this, especially at the price point of this cooler. At the time of making this video, this cooler can be found on Amazon right now for $34.99. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a 5% off coupon as well. So it might be something you want to go and check out. So would I recommend this to anybody? Yes, I would recommend this to everybody. Everybody who is not looking to do AIO or custom water cooling and they want a cheap option that's going to get you in the door, it's going to give you the ability to Overclock, it's going to give you the ability to have all that RGB unicorn stuff and it's going to be giving you a whole lot of headroom and room for expansion if you want to upgrade your system, you want to overclock your CPU, you want to start doing different things, you want to improve the quality of your stream, so you got to bump up your CPU a little bit. 100%, this thing's going to keep up with whatever you're going to throw at your CPU. That being said, there's a caveat to that. I'm talking to people who are mainly doing lower end, I don't want to say lower end, not as capable CPUs uh, would be like, you know, three, you know, Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, maybe Ryzen 7, maybe. But if you start pushing the boundaries with a Ryzen 7 and you're really overclocking and you're really doing a lot, you might want to beef up to an AIO or do a custom water cooling loop. But for the, for the vast majority of people, this is going to do a great job for whatever you're going to throw at it. It's going to keep up with your CPU. This is going to outlive your CPU more than likely. Maybe not the fan, but the cooler probably will. Well, I hope that everyone found this video helpful. Um, if you're interested in anything that I used in the video, their links are in the description below. It'll take you to Amazon where they all are. Also, let me know what you want to see in future videos down there in the comments section. You know, what topics, what kind of components. You want to, there's something you want me to have reviewed. By all means, let me know. I'll take a look. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and bell icon so you can be notified whenever I have new videos and you won't miss another one if you hit that bell icon. This has been Captain Morgan, and until I see you next time, game on.